What's up, everybody? It's a little after 12 o'clock. It is Tuesday. It is time for lunch break, brought to you by RecTech. Man, we are going to have a great time. It is brisket week, and my main man is going to show us how to do it. The often imitated, never duplicated, Chef Greg Muller. Everybody, Chef John said it. We are live because I heard it, but I also got the notifications because they are set. Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Lunch Break presented by RecTech, powered by Kingsford. Man, we have a great episode today. It's brisket week. It's academy week. We're getting our friends and families from all over the United States joining us here on the RecTech deck at Academy. We got tents set up. We got the grill set up. We got the fridge stocked. Yeah, we boy. got volunteers calling us when mm -hmm. they can come in and help out. I'm super stoked. But I'm going to show you guys how to make a delicious recipe using something that we get a lot of questions on. Brisket flats. Okay? Uh, and they're pretty lean. And I'm going to show you my favorite way to prepare a brisket flat. And it's soon to be your favorite way, too. But do us all a favor. Go ahead and share this video. And make sure we uh, spread the wealth of Recneck and all of these fantastic recipes that you guys can find at uh, rectech.com slash lunchbreak. And make sure you guys comment down below, and Chef John will let us know what's good in your neck of the woods. That's right. And we'll go ahead and get started. But Chef John. Yes, sir. So, Academy Week. Man, it's I'm a, excited. It's a big week around it's here. It's a huge week. It's like gearing up. The whole week we gear up for the weekend. I'm super stoked. For sure. I'm excited because uh, it's going to be a little bit cooler this time. Yeah, buddy. So, you know, shorts, hoodies, and coffee. Yes, I'm loving that. I'm I, excited for that one. That's my kind of weather. Um. Well, I could see short uh, pants, hoodies, and flip-flops. Yeah, That's acceptable, that too. too. I love that, too, Chef Greg. All right, so we've got a five-pound brisket flat that um, picked up at the grocery store. Now, I know briskets can be a little expensive, but sometimes brisket flats, you can find a great value at the grocery store. And this was no exception. Uh, this was a uh, five-and-a-half-pound brisket flat that I picked up at Walmart, of all places, and it cost me $27. So do the math on that. Not very expensive at all. Now... Again, it's a little bit thin in some spots. This is a USDA choice. Again, nothing wrong with that. It is a leaner brisket, but albeit you can still get some delicious uh, meat out of here. And I went to the store the other day to buy some chuck roasts, and those chuck roasts were about three times as expensive as this brisket flat. So, but I'm going to go ahead and get these brisket flat kind of trimmed up a little bit. Some of the, uh, the fat that's underneath. I'm not going to go crazy with it. But I just want to clean it up a little bit because, you know, that's how we roll around here. All right, Chef Craig, let's talk brisket. Yeah, now, buddy. Now, when we're cooking a brisket, we're going to lose some weight on that, right? So this is a five-pound pre-cooked. Yeah, so this was uh, just shy of six pounds. So we're probably going to lose about a you know pound and three-quarter in the process. Um, it's just nature of the beast. I'm sorry. Albeit still delicious. Uh, the brisket is the pectoral muscle of the cow. So when the cow is, you know, laying in the field being a happy cow because, you know, happy cows are tasty cows. It's that muscle that that cow will actually push up on, um, so it can be a little tough. But when you cook it low and slow, that's right. it is delicious. So that's all the trim I'm doing that bottom side. Okay, now just for reference, this was would be where the point would be located from, and that would be laying over here. Now it's been removed because, again, this is just the flat. So this is the leaner uh, of the brisket uh, muscles. Now this is a great, sure. um, this is a great piece of meat that you guys can use for smaller families. So maybe you're only feeding a couple people. Great place to start. You can still get some great uh, flavor and food. Now I'm going to trim some of this fat cap off because if you notice, like right here, you can see how thick that is. Okay. And we're going to make pulled beef, and I don't want pulled fat. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and trim. See, I'm not losing any meat. It's just fat. I'm going to trim some of this off. Now, Chef Greg, I've heard you say fat equals flavor. Correct, but what the f where the fat and flavor get you is in here. You want to see marbling, okay? So in your meats, when you see that, that fat intramuscular, that's where the flavor is. The fat cap on the top is not going to magically render down and make your brisket moist and delicious. 
okay? But since this is a leaner piece of meat, I'm going to leave a little bit on there to kind of render out and protect that muscle. Now, I don't mind eating fat. In fact, I love it, <laughs> okay? But I don't want to eat big gobs of, of fat, so I'm going to go in here and just kind of clean it up a little bit. Chef Greg, I got a question from top, top fan Valerie. Yeah. She wants to know, is there any truth to there being a difference between the left side and the right side of the brisket? Okay, I personally have never found that to be the case. But again, a wives' tale, because a lot of time cows are kind of lazy, they kind of lay on their right <laughs> side. So some folks say that the left side is more tender, okay? But I don't know. I've, I've never seen that, that to be the case. Are there size differences in the left and the right size? No. Okay. Just sizes of the animal. Okay. Now, is that the same Valerie that won that Dirty Girl prize I pack yesterday? I think it is. I think it is. She's also a uh, barbecue volunteer for KCBS events. I oh, ran nice. into her at the uh, Rufus Teague Challenge in Aiken a couple That's weeks back. That's what I'm back. talking about. Yeah. I was wearing that Rectech mask. I kind of stood out like a sore thumb. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of trim off some of this spongier fat on the top. Again, I'm not going to get crazy, okay? We're not really losing a lot of weight here. And all of this fat here is good for uh, saving for grind for sausages, summer sausage, all sorts of good stuff, okay? But I want to kind of remove some of that fat just like that. Now, again, this is where that point would lay, and this is normally where you see that kind of large, chunky fat in between, okay? But for me, I think this looks uh, pretty darn delicious. What about, what say you, Chef John? Yes, I agree 100%. Okay. Uh, we got a great question from top fan Jim. He says that in the grocery store he can always find flats. Yeah. But it's almost impossible to find the points. Where do all the points go? Well, okay. A lot of those points will get ground up for ground beef. Um, and in different markets, you can find it. Like if you go to Texas, you might find a higher population of, say, brisket point uh, flats, whereas the uh, – sorry – Reverse that, scratch that backwards. You might find more brisket points. Whereas, like, in the Northeast, you do a lot of pastrami's, a lot of corned beef. You tend to find a lot more of the flats. So depending on the regionality and where they go, that's kind of where you see uh, some of that stuff. But brisket flats, delicious. So we're going to kind of up this flavor elevator a little bit. I'm going to put a binder on here. I'm going to use some nice, spicy mustard. Chef John, you got that hand up like you got a great question. Yeah. First of all, I want to give a shout out to all 518 people what? that are watching. We love 518 people. That's what I'm talking about. We had a great question from our good friend Scott Schroeder. He wants to know, does a brisket fit on, a full brisket fit on the 340 easily? Absolutely. You can fit an 18-pound to 20-pound full packer brisket on there. No problem whatsoever. And again, since we're going to turn this into a delicious pulled beef, I'm going to hit that with that Colden's freaking Greek on top of that mustard. Because I like that salt, pepper, and herb flavor in there. Okay? But again, it's beef. So you know we're going to hit it with that Ben's heifer dust. Okay? You can find all these rubs at rectech.com. Everything's back in stock. Now, normally I'd let this sit for 10 minutes or so and kind of sweat and let that mustard sort of rehydrate some of that uh, delicious seasoning. But I'm impatient, so I'm just going to kind of give it a push. I'm not rubbing it in. I'm just giving it a push. Okay? And we're going to repeat for this, uh, this side right here. I'm, I'm a fan of spicy mustard as a binder. What do you think, John? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I love the spicy mustard. I love it as a binder, too, because it doesn't really add much flavor to anything. It nope. just helps the seasoning stick. It's like glue. It That's is. it. That's all it, it is. is. We got a question from uh, Doug Wilkerson. What's up, he, Doug? He asks, why do some briskets get done faster than others? Okay, there are a lot of variables in regards to meat. Now, this is a great question that one of our uh, CSR sent me yesterday. So when you are cooking a piece of meat, like a brisket. Typically, it's a larger pieces of meat. You see more variability in that than you do small pieces of meat. Why? There's a lot of variables. Those variables can be age of the animal. Uh, it could be moisture content in that piece of meat. It can be how big that piece of meat is. Intramuscular fat. Now, just because something is graded as USDA choice, they're kind of different tiers of that. So it's kind of like, you know, um, like gasoline for your car. Gas is not just gas. You got like 93 octane, you know, you got 89, That's 87. Right. Your car might run a little bit different based on that. Is it enough that you're really going to notice it? Eh, maybe not. But if you've got that old, like, you know, 76 Oldsmobile <laughs> and you put that 87 in there, you might hear that motor sort of knock a little bit louder than, say, with like a 93 octane. 
Now, in the case of meat, variables can be, you know, this is a six pound piece of meat. So it's kind of even in thickness and long. Now, what if this was a six pound piece of meat that was short fat? It would cook differently than something that's long and skinny. Okay, it's like me and Chef John go to the beach. That's right. Okay, we're gonna tan a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're both two good-looking sure guys. Dang, we're gonna tan differently though. Okay, but again, your piece of meat's gonna be a little bit different. How the airflow in the grill is gonna affect that as well, whether it's short and fat, long and skinny. Chef John, what you got? Okay, uh, our good friend Dennis uh, Vassbinder. I hope I said his last name right. Mm -hmm. He says he asked, "Do you prefer Angus over regular beef?" All right. So certified Angus beef. I'm gonna blow your mind here right now. Okay. We know that a lot of things in our economy and uh, revolve around money and financials, right? So certified Angus beef, okay, is not some magical different animal, okay? Is an Angus cow, yes. But certified Angus beef is nothing more than a sort of co-op of cattle ranchers Ooh. and a very good marketing firm behind them to make money. So what did they do? They defined attributes that the Angus cows already had, okay? Then they put those into restaurants and brainwashed a lot of restaurateurs and chefs to think it's better. <laughs> they charge more money for that, okay? It's the same animal. It's a USDA certified piece of meat. Now, they will like to tell you that it represents the top 3% of all USDA choice. Cows are walking around a field. How are they magically th in the top 3%? They I like don't. To think, I like to think that there were some top 3% cows out so there. So they did the same thing. It's like if you look at the grading, and like I said, there's 13 variables that they look at, you know, minimal hump. Okay. Well, how does the hump make the cow taste any better? Good point, Chef. I'm Craig. just saying. So if you actually look into it, it's a marketing ploy. A lot of steakhouses use it. Um, you know, uh, I'll say your, your more chain restaurants will get behind it. Why? Because they want to be able to charge $2 more for that piece of meat. There you go. So it's all it is. Um, but if you have an Angus ranch near you that's not a part of certified Angus beef, again, it's going to be delicious, but it's not going to be, you know, the high dollar thing you're going to get on the menu. But best practice, know where your meat comes from. That's right. If you've got a local uh, rancher near you, support them. They will look out for you, and ultimately you might find a piece of meat that tastes better because there is difference between grain-fed, grass-fed, uh, grass finish, grain finish. Uh, it does have a different um, flavor profile and texture on the piece of meat. Chef John, what you got? Yes, Pete asked, uh, do you start with the brisket at room temperature before you start cutting anything off? Um, I actually put it in the freezer for about 35 minutes to get that fat good and, and cold. Now, typically when I smoke meats, I don't leave them at room temp. I'll actually put them in the grill from uh, a, uh, a uh, cold state, you know, 40 degrees. And I do that for a couple reasons. Now, if I took this piece of meat at uh, 70 degrees, it would take less time to get to the stall. So we're going from 70 degrees, about 160 degrees. Now, if that brisket is as cold as it can be, you know, 38 or 40 degrees, now I've got 40 more degrees of internal cook temp to get to that uh, stall. That's 40 more degrees that I'm going to be able to, you know, develop bark. 40 more degrees that I'm going to be able to develop some good smoke flavor in that piece of meat. Now, if I was looking to cook a steak, to 133 degrees, which to me is the perfect medium rare, then yes, at that point, I'm going to warm it up to room temp because I want to cook that steak as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible. And if it's uh, going from 70 to 130, it's less time for things to get tough and dry out. So if you're going low and slow or a longer cook like a smoke, start cold. If you're doing something like in the case of chicken breast or a thinner piece of meat, start at a room temp and then cook. Uh, you'll have more uh, consistent results. But fantastic question. All right, so we talked about doing this delicious bra or, um, pulled beef. Now, I've got a couple cups of beef au jus. I'm going to add some onion in here. And you can use those au jus gravy packets. You know, Ray Carnes is favorite au jus gravy packet. He loves that stuff. And to make this extra mo flavorful, I'm going to go ahead and hit that with some Ben's heifer dust. Okay. And then we're also going to put a little bit of that cold and freak Greek in there because, I mean, we put it on the meat. It's good enough. Now, we're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to go rogue a second. I'm going to take that small interior shelf, okay, Sorry. and we're going to put it over top of that pan because then I'm going to take this beautifully seasoned brisket and we're going to lay it over top of this pan. Now, 
Chef, why are we doing that? Yeah, why are we doing that? So what's going to happen is whatever fat and drippings that's going to come is going to go into the juice. We're going to cook this for about mm, three hours, three and a half hours at 300 degrees. Okay, this is going to look amazing. Then we're going to take that brisket. We're going to put it into that juice, wrap it tight and finish cooking it till it is tender right around 205 degrees. Okay, because we're going to pull this. I want this to be as moist as possible. And all of that flavor in that juice is really going to give us a home run when it comes to flavor. Okay, and this is also the, called the over the top. You could do some ground beef on there if you make an over the top chili. So you got your, your beans, your peppers, your onions, all sorts of delicious stuff um, in that pan. Put your ground beef over the top. Super good. John, what you got? Okay, uh, top fan Kevin Powers wants to know, what are your thoughts on grass-fed beef? Okay, so grass-fed beef will be a little bit of a leaner animal compared to different varieties of grain-fed or pasture-fed animals. There's nothing wrong with that. I do find since it's a little bit more lean, it's going to be a little bit of a drier chew, and it's going to be a little bit more of a denser animal. Again, fat is flavor, so when animals are bulked up on the feedlot, they're going to be a little bit more juicy because they have more internal fat. That's where the, the, that beefy flavor is. But if you prefer more of that sort of hay sort of attribute that you can get from that, it's fantastic. It's just going to be a little bit more dense, potentially a little bit more tough of a, of a piece of meat. And that's just what, how that animal was raised. Chef John, what you got? Okay, t talk to us about um, injection versus marinating. You could do both with a brisket, right? Yeah, for sure. Now, I tend to, if I'm going to do larger pieces of meat, I tend to inject because I can put super concentrated uh, uh, very precise amounts of injection into that piece of meat. Now, since we're going to braise this essentially in the in the au jus, I don't need to inject or marinate. Um, for thinner cuts of meat, marinades are great, but again, it's going to work through osmosis, and only so much will get into that piece of meat. But if you want to hyper uh, saturate uh, your meat, injection is definitely the way to go. But we've got the RT700 preheated at 350 degrees. We are burning those delicious Kingsford signature blend pellets. We're going to go ahead and get this brisket in here, and we're going to let this go for about three, three and a half hours. Okay? And then what we're going to do is just we're going to take that brisket and then put it into the au jus. That's it. Super simple. Okay? No fuss. You could do this with chuck roasts. You could do this with rump roasts. You could do this with what's marketed as pot roast at the grocery store. But honestly, a lot of times you can find briskets for really good prices, really affordably around in your area. So, you know, you might walk by that brisket flat and say, not today, Sam. But I'm telling you, pick it up. Grab a couple of them because you can find great value in those um, brisket flats. So we have a, some people out here that are saying that you may ruin the bark by putting it in the liquid, but we're braising this. We're yeah, because we're going to pull that. So right. this is not what we're going to do for sliced brisket. Now, if I wanted to make sliced brisket, uh, I tend to use a full packer because, again, there's more meat to go with. But you could definitely smoke that off. Now, since it is a flat, I'm still going to wrap it, okay? I prefer to wrap all of my meats. But, again, it's going to be delicious. So do you want to have something that's drier and preserve the bark? Okay. But I'd rather have more moist, juicy brisket. You can always put it back on the smoker to set your bark or glaze it if you want um, after it's been cooked and tender. But again, you have to kind of draw the line on what are, you, what are you looking for? Are you looking for, you know, moist, tender pulled meat for sandwiches? This is a great way to go. Nothing wrong with that. Chef John, what you got? All right, talk to us about hot and fast brisket versus low and slow brisket. Which one do you prefer, and what are the characteristics of the differences? All right, so I tend to cook my briskets hot and fast. So uh, whether I'm doing a whole packer or not, I tend to go 300, 325. I find that, especially when I inject that piece of meat, at those temps, uh, that brisket will swell up and plump, and I get a more moist brisket. Um, when you go 225, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just going to take a lot longer to cook, um, and... You know, if you don't wrap at some point, you are just losing moisture. And that's uh, that's the same whether you're cooking pork butt or ribs or brisket. There's no difference there. Um, I prefer hot and fast. I like the um, texture it gives the meat. And I also like that it doesn't take all day long because we did briskets yesterday for an event, and I cooked them in five and a half hours, yeah. and they were 20-pound briskets. Yeah, and they were awesome, too. That was the brisket that I used yesterday, if you guys saw uh, back then. Yeah, that was beyond. that brisket that uh, Chef John kept giving Jody the credit <laughs> for. Now, Jody, Jody told me he made it. Jody seasoned it. He put it on the grill, but this guy watched it. Okay, this Jody guy wrapped it. It was a team effort. My no, I'm just, I'm just talking trash. <laughs> all right, but I'm not going to have you wait three and a half hours, okay? Because you know I got your back, and it's lunch break. 
And I don't know about you, our lunch break are only about a half an hour long. Yeah. So in the RT340 here, I've got a pan with a brisket. Right there. I love it. I love Jeff it too. Jeff Greg, on a regular brisket, are you a spritzer or a mopper? I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't do jack. I literally just put it on there. I might spray it with butter every now and then, but even then it, it you know. Regular butter you just spray it with? Like the, uh, you know, the, uh, I can't believe it's not butter. Oh, right. Imitation Good butter. Good stuff. Margarine. Sorry. Margarine. Correction. Margarine. Margarine. All right. So here we go. Ready, Sharp? Now, this was a brisket that was um, a, a full packer that I just cut in half. Okay? So this went for three and a half hours above, and then I wrapped it up in the pan until it was probe tender. Now, you can see how nice and squishy this is. That ooh, fat's ooh. all rendered out. Ooh, that looks so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands in here, and we're just going to... And I've got hot gloves because... Yeah, well, I was I about to a, say, how do you get your hands in there, Chef Chris? I am a manly man, and you can see that fat seam right here has really just come apart. Now this Man, is, so good. look how moist that is, okay? And we're gonna make some really good pulled beef. So I'm gonna remove this fat out of here and leave all that delicious. Now this is all fat, okay? Now I don't mind munching on that, but that's not good eats for everybody, okay? All right, Chef Greg, I got a couple questions for you. Yeah, buddy. Uh, the first question is why uh, margarine why do you spritz with margarine? And the second one it comes from our top fan, Crystal Field Klein. She wants to know, can you get great flavor in the brisket without injecting? You sure can. Um, injection is just insurance. That's all it is. Okay. Um, but you can get great flavor. And look, this is just literally falling apart. You can do this with brisket flats. You can do this with chuck roasts. You can do this with but all sorts of stuff. Look at how amazing that yeah, is. Yeah, I know. You guys need to show Chef Greg some love. I need to see some hearts, some wow faces. And this, this was wrapped up for right about um, an hour and a half, okay? But each piece of meat is going to be a little bit different. So what you want to do is just kind of give it a poke, and if it's tender, let it rest. Now, normally I would let this rest, you know, before I would do this. Um, but this is only a 30-minute show. So. <laughs> but again, you got that pulled beef. And what you want to do is, when you pull it, you want to put it back in the juice. Yes. Because brisket is inherently a dry piece of meat. Okay, so what you want to do is put it back in the juice, and that'll maintain a lot of that moisture and give a lot of good flavor back into that. You're not going to lose the crusty bits. It's going to be super delicious, as Our I like to say. Chef Greg, why the margarine? Why spritz with margarine? Ah, sorry. So if I use butter, um, the milk fat and butter could burn, and it's not something that I, that I do margarine uh, since it's more of a uh, soybean base. It kind of just melts and uh, gives moisture. But it's just like if you get a hot skillet and you put butter in there, it's going to burn. Whereas if you use, you know, margarine, it kind of melts and holds its, uh, but you can see how, I mean, just. Oh, man, it looks so good. Guys, give us a like. Give us a love. It is lunch break. We are doing pulled beef today. Chef Greg is throwing it down. Actually, not throwing it. Well, I guess I did throw it under the table well, right you're there. You're like tearing it up. How about Tear tearing, we're it tearing it up? You're tearing it up. But that's what you want right there. Okay, now this is portions of that flat. Okay, again, super lean, but you can see this fat just comes right off. My hands are like slippery when wet here with this uh, brisket fat. Okay, but the same thing. This is lean muscle. It's literally just shredding like pulled pork. Okay? Man, this looks so good. It smells delicious out here. The whole Rec Tech deck smells delicious. We've just ruined Charlie Weir today. He is like... <laughs> And you got to get some hot gloves because I literally would not be able to do this without these cotton gloves under my hands. Chef Greg, what temp did you take off? Uh, we were at 205. 205? Yeah. Internal? Yep. And you could, again, it's probe tender. So probe tender for you might be 207, 208, 210. It just depends. So grab your instant read thermometer or a toothpick and just kind of poke. Now, if it's tough, you can go ahead and pull it, put it back in the juice, and just let it sit for 10 minutes. I guarantee it'll get tender. Okay, but I'm just going to keep ripping. Chef Greg, we have a question from top fan Suzanne uh, Thompson. She asks, what is the best way to change out pellet flavors? Okay, I don't. Um, so I tend to run one pellet. We've been running a lot of those Kingsford Signature Blend pellets uh, here. Now, if you want to change out the pellets, now, Suzanne, I know you have an RT590, which is a 30-pound hopper. 
Um, you can run that hopper low on a cook, and if you know you're going to do fish one day and you're going to, you know, pork the day before, maybe you only put, like, a, you know, um, half a hopper in there. It just kind of depends. You can grab a red solo cup. Oh, man, this is so good. Grab a red solo cup, that big fat seam right there, and uh, scoop those out. But, again, it just kind of depends on how you want to live your rectic lifestyle. Chef Greg, where did you get your cotton uh, heat-resistant gloves from? Our buddies at AtlantaBBQStore.com. But you can find them on Amazon. But you can use that uh, discount code RECTEC10, R-E-C-T-E-Q-10, at Atlanta Barbecue Store. Get 10% off your entire order. That's what I'm talking Rubs, about. Rubs, sauces, accessories, all sorts of good stuff. Brian and Ellen Jarvis are proud supporters of the RECTEC Academy. Yeah. And um, Forget going to Amazon. Y'all just go to Atlanta Barbecue and pick up all your supplies. Grab you some white lightning while you're there. Yeah. And that's pretty much it right here, John. That this is all awesome. mostly fat. There's one little muscle here. Crystal Field Klein says uh, you put some Gouda on top of that dip and make it illegal, chef. I mean, Gouda is good, Yeah. but I think Bud is better. Oh. <laughs> no, Gouda is being a good sandwich. You could do some um, horseradish. Havarti would be really good on here. And speaking of being good on here, I'm going to go ahead and toast off some pretzel bread. Yeah. Because we'll make us some sandwiches. I'm going to finish pulling this brisket. You can see it's just literally falling apart. Chef Greg, do you keep your grills at your house, your rec techs, do you keep them full of pellets or do you just add it as you're going to need? So to I am not a good uh, rec tech parent. I kind of abuse my grills at the house. I don't clean my fire pots out nearly as often as I should. Um, I definitely don't clean the barrels. They are seasoned, beautiful, and delicious. But for me, I keep my drip pans pretty clean. Usually my hoppers are, I'll say, mostly full. And then what I'll do is every couple bags of pellets, I'll actually uh, let them run uh, out. And that way I can remove any uh, sawdust that might be under there That's or, great. you know, inspect yes. my auger tube and that sort of stuff. This is that big, basically, hunk of fat that's in between the point and flat. And you can see it's just it's just goo. But I'm going to throw that out because that's not good eats. All right. Chef, Chef John, Rick, what you got? Yeah, uh, top fan Vince Smicka asks, uh, do pellets have a shelf life? They do, in fact. So... You know, if your pellets, you know, are stored in, I'll say, a, you know, slightly humid environment, um, you know, let's say you live in the, the south, you keep them in your garage, they're going to be fine for, you know, six months or so. They might last a little bit longer if you put them in containers, but typically I tend to, um, you know, use my pellets up pretty quick. So if you've got 200 pounds of pellets at the house, I cook just about every day on my Rectex, and I know you do too. Mm. That's really good. Mm. But... You know, tend to buy from a, a source that you know has some rotation on pellets. What I mean by that is, you know, a store that sells them. So whether you're um, at your grocery store picking up some Kingsford pellets, they come in 20-pound bags, or you're using a source on Amazon or a local distributor near you, that is stupid, stupid tasty. It looks so tasty. Uh, Chef Greg, Crystal Field Kleins asked, besides white lightning, what other seasonings would you recommend from the Atlanta barbecue store? All right, so for me, I love... Um, Mississippi grind on some ribs. I am a huge fan of La Barbacoa Cow Whisperer. I'm a huge fan of Heath Riles' rubs. Now, I do know, unfortunately, he did get one of those tea grills in his backyard, mm -hmm. and we're going to have to work on that. Mm -hmm. But Heath Riles' um, Everyday Rub and Honey Rub are fantastic. We're actually going to use his uh, Honey Chipotle Rub at Academy this weekend. Um, what else is really good? Um, you can get... The Two Gringos Chupacabra is always really good. Um, let me see here. you got to pick up. Now, here's the thing. The uh, Swine Life barbecue sauce. Screaming, screaming good stuff. They've got a Texas Heat, which is really tasty. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to stir this up and give another bite here because this smells too good to not <laughs> eat it. What you got, John? All right, got a couple questions for you. Um... The first one is, if people want to uh, get this recipe, they want to find out about more recipes like this, where do they need to mm -hmm. go? And the second one is, uh, Nathan, Nathan asks, do you foil your uh, drip pan or do you scrape it clean? Mm. I need a minute because that's <laughs> ridiculous. So I'm a foil guy. You don't have to foil, just keep it clean. I know Jody Flanagan, your barbecue expert, is a scraper. I think John's a foil guy at the house, yeah, too. Yeah, foil guy, yes. And I actually put a couple pieces of foil on mine, so I just have to rip it off. Oh, you're like the NASCAR windshield. NASCAR windshield. I That's get how it. I do it. That's how I do it. 
Uh, Doug Wilkerson asked, um, if, you're, uh, if you're cooking on your grill and your grill runs out of pellets during the cook, can mm -hmm. you just add more pellets to it, or do you have to do something special? You want to be careful with that because what you're going to have a, a gap in your auger tube. For some me, I'll actually turn the grill off. I'll let it go through its full 300-second cool-down cycle. I'll put pellets into the grill. Then I'll go into the test mode of the grill. You can do that simply by holding the uh, settings button for about three to five seconds. At that point, it'll display probably one AUG, and then it'll display your minimum feed rate. Press the power button, it'll go into your test mode. Advance that until it says 5-1 AUG. It'll run that auger, which will then fill up that auger tube. Wait about 30 seconds or so, and then go ahead and just turn the grill back on, and that way you should be good to go. If you just dump pellets in there, what could happen, you could have a flame out. Again, not a, not a big deal, but it's easier just to advance those pellets through that auger tube. Um, but I like some horseradish sauce yeah, when buddy. it comes to a pulled beef sandwich. Mm -hmm. So I've got three parts sour cream to one part mayonnaise, okay? And that is Hellman's mayonnaise. We've got um, <laughs> four ounces of horseradish, prepared horseradish. Now I put that in a, a strainer and push the water out of it to make it uh, nice and thick still. We're gonna hit that with some Ben's heifer dust. And then a little bit of that freaking Greek. You said that was blue plate mayonnaise, chef? Hellman's. <laughs> All right, and then I'm just gonna do a little squeeze of that mustard. And just mix it up. And this is going to be my horseradish sauce for our... Charlie, will you grab us another cutting board? It's going to be our horseradish sauce for our delicious sandwich. I'm going to grab these pretzel rolls. I picked these up at the grocery store today. They looked pretty interesting. I figured, why not? I wasn't going to make bread myself because, I mean... This is only a 30-minute show going on 40 minutes. <laughs> but we got our pretzel bread here. Already smells amazing. And if you're doing, you know, pulled beef, think of something different. Maybe use like an onion roll or think of a different bread that might, you know, offer a little different flavor to it. Yeah, oh, Crystal Field Klein says man. you should have used blue plate to step up that sauce. Child, please. Just to take it to the don't, next level, Don't give Chef, Chef John any ideas around <laughs> here. Okay. All right, so we've got our pretzel bread, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a little of this horseradish sauce, just like that. Oh, yes. We'll go ahead and do that side, too. I like horseradish. Then we're going to grab some of that pulled beef. Oh, yeah. Guys, if you want a Chef Greg pulled beef sandwich, hit that heart button right now. Show him some love. I'm about to show you some love, John. I can't wait. Come over and eat this with me? Yes, you know it. Come on. Oh, man. We got that horseradish. We've got that Ooh. delicious oh pulled man. brisket. Look at this thing. Cheers, buddy. Cheers to you, my friend. I like the pretzel bread. Good yeah. texture there. Yeah, good call. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. I almost got my shoes. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. That's not, I'm speechless. That's slamming. But it's the horseradish really sets it off with the smoke from the meat. Yeah. But cuts through that. It's really rich. Mm. The brisket's really rich. It has a delicious flavor. That jus that he cooked it in. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So good. Pretzel bread. Delicious. Good job. Mm. Mm mm. -mm. Woo! Well, I know what it, we're eating for good today. Yeah. Yes, we are, oh, Chef man. Greg. But it. Ooh. Let me recap. We've got that brisket flat. We rubbed that down with some mustard. Hit with some Colton's freaking Greek and a little bit of that heifer dust. We've got a pan of au jus staying nice hot with some onions. In a couple hours, I'm just going to lower that brisket into that delicious au jus. Mm. We'll wrap it up tight with aluminum foil. We'll keep cooking it until it's probe tender. Then we're going to take it out. We're going to shred it. We're going to put it back in that au jus so it's nice and, and, and super moist. Find some good rolls. Make you some horseradish sauce. Wow, that was so good. And just like. Yeah. You gotta lean back when you eat mm -hmm. it because, like. You know it's good when you gotta lean back. It's gonna drip. Yeah. And you gotta rock away. Yeah. Truthfully, Chef Greg, maybe I might have put a piece of provolone on there or something, but that was slamming. You nailed it. I mean, you could take some, like, horseradish pepper jack. Oh. Or, yeah. like, some spicy habanero cheese. Oh, okay. Or, like, anything, really. But. 
Wow. That's, that's where really you guys come in. Because you can be as creative as you want. Start with pulled beef. Maybe you want to turn this into like barbacoa style tacos. Ooh. Go for it. You can add some smoked salsa to that. Make a taco. It'd be delicious. Oh. Maybe you're going to make Goodness. pizzas at the house or calzones. And you want a pulled beef calzone. I'm not going to lie. If I went home and someone made me a pulled beef calzone. <coughs> Julie. I'd probably be like the happy, like way more happy than I normally am. Okay, <laughs> you're I'm pretty a pretty happy, happy guy. guy. I was gonna say you're a pretty happy guy. You can take like a take and bake pizza and go ahead and like put that on the top, and you have just made that something completely unique and special. Man. But pulled beef is not just a a uh, a result of overcooking that brisket. No. You can get brisket, chuck roast, rump roast. Follow that same process. It'd be delicious because, again, brisket is a very versatile meat. Chef John showed you how to utilize that in some delicious smoked brisket stroganoff. Man, that was so good. We showed you how to make pulled beef. Tomorrow, Wednesday after hours, we're going to show you how to make beef jerky. Yeah. On Thursday, Jody Flanagan, your Rectech Girls expert, is going to show you how to make an amazing French dip sandwich. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, we're going to bring it full circle because it's Academy Week. We're going to show you guys brisket 101, all the do's and don'ts. We'll yeah. have pitmasters here from all over the country. Can we tell them who the pitmasters are yet, or do you as exclusive you have to come? I mean, I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be here. Chef John will be here. Jody yep, will so be here. Absolutely, guys. We've got uh, Matt Barber with Hot Wachula's Barbecue. He is out of uh, Lakeland, Florida. Um, we've got uh, Ernest Cervantes with Burnt Bean Barbecue Company mm -hmm. from Texas. Now, Ernest is a pretty popular guy. Super popular guy. Now, he's been on Food Network, yep. uh, Barbecue Chop Masters. Yep. He's been a judge. He's been a participant. Yep. He won a check for 50 grand from yep. the Food Network. Mm -hmm. Okay? And you I know what? I love when people take money from the Food Network. He cooks on a rec tech. And he's got some friends uh, that are going to join him here. Uh, Roddy Trevino will be coming back. Can't wait to see Roddy. Absolutely. Love We've got Rob Arocha with um, yep. Bullhorn Barbecue. You've got Carlo Casanova with Casanova Barbecue Company oh, coming in town. There'll be a couple other people. It's going to be a blast. Everything from whole hogs to briskets to ribs to chicken to backyard recipes. Academy is not just for professionals. It's not just for those that want to become barbecue competitors. It will make you a better cook. Yeah. It will make you a better chef. It'll make you appreciate the finer things in life. Uh, live music on the deck every Thursday and Friday night for Academy. Um, we've got movie night up top with the Minions. Friday night it's going to be a blast. Blast. Make sure you guys follow us on all social media. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to do some beef jerky. And then Thursday, Chef John does the Late Late Show. Yeah, He's got dude. something sweet up his sleeves for Late Night Munchies. That's going to be on Instagram at yeah. 11 o'clock. Again, That's Fun right. Day Friday will be right here at 12 noon Eastern. And we're going to show you all of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Now, Academy is sold out for next year. You heard that right. All what? six dates are sold out for 2021. But in the unlikely event we do get some cancellations, go ahead and email me, chefgreg at rectech.com. I'll put you on a wait list. I'll give you a call. It does happen from time to time. Um, I'll be more than happy to put you on a wait list. And you never know. We might add another date in 2021. It kind of just depends. Yeah. I've already gotten emails asking about 2022. I say y'all email Chef Greg and tell him to add another date for 2021, y'all. Hey, I'd be happy to, <laughs> but we got a lot going on, okay? But from all of us at the RecTech Worldwide Headquarters here in beautiful Evans, Georgia, in a nice, cool 72-degree, partly cloudy, yes. light, 5-10 uh, to 10 mile an hour breeze out Thank of the Northwest, you, we appreciate it. It's yes. a beautiful time of year. God bless you. God bless the United States, and we will see you guys. At, at the, the rec tech. tech. Do, do, do. What's up, Karina? Do, do, Kellen, do. Kay, Nick Dalton. What's do, up, buddy? Do, do. Scott Schiffel. We will see rec you, buddy, tech here at Academy. Lifestyle. i got to give you a call. Let you know we can park that camper. Jeff Nichols, Chris, Tommy, down. Josh. What's up, guys? Live your Mitchell life Bidwell. The way you like. Jim Burke will be here, but not this lifestyle. month. He does live right down the street. Do, do, we love our do, friends do. at Killer Bee Barbecue. They took that grand championship not too, too long ago. Doug Wilkerson, Pierre, 